Okay, so I'm going to take a look at three ways to jam along with the Spark 40 amp. One is with the Smart Jam feature, so there's two components of that, so that's why it's three. The first component being the Create uh, option with auto chords. So you uh, hit record, you play along with it, and it will capture the chord progression that you're playing. The second is playing along with backing tracks, uh, which is fairly straightforward. The third is playing along with Spotify or Apple Music. So first, make sure you upgrade to 1.5. It came out June 3rd, 3rd or 4th, something like that. And it does fix one interesting bug if you're playing with Spotify. Namely, it wouldn't play the song. So I tried playing a track yesterday that I imported through my Spotify library, and I got just a nondescript general developer error, uh, and it wouldn't play at all. So I thought maybe that had something to do with a video being unlisted or private, so I tested that today and uh, it seems to be fixed. So first, the video that I tried yesterday, uh, and it wouldn't play, it played today, fine, no problem. And when I tried this with my own channel uh, of setting a video to unlisted and private, it actually tells you that in the error message. So if you import a song and then you click to play it in the interface, and it is a private video, it will tell you this is a private video and it won't play it. So that's more helpful. Um, so the other update for version 1.5 they added a new drummer Sharon who is allegedly a little more funky than the than uh, than good old Dave so we'll see if she actually is a little bit more funky and uh, tone tagging not really applicable for this test but it should make it easier to find stuff on tone cloud so let's uh, get right into it here so let's open up the spark app again the first thing always is go into your menu settings here and make sure where it says hardware settings there, that it doesn't say connect hardware. So if you are switching between using the app and the amp by itself, um, it doesn't always connect right away when you open the app up. So there's been times when I've been playing along and I'm going, hey, this doesn't sound like what I've got on my screen here. Um, go in and connect the app. It would be cool if they had a little icon somewhere on the screen that would say, um, hey, you're not connected. So connect your, your app and the settings there first. So all right so we get a sound let's make sure it's the right one the cool thing i do like about this app is uh, you don't have to click into each one of these things and click the stomp button to get it to go you can swipe down to enable swipe up to disable for all of them. So if you are using this as a recording interface, one really neat thing you can do is if you just want to um, capture a dry signal or a DI signal, flip all these up. And that's gonna be the equivalent of just capturing your guitar, just a dry signal, which is actually very cool. So for those of you that don't have an audio interface, you don't need one. You can just record and then whatever DAW you're using, GarageBand, Logic, Reaper, whatever, um, you can just use whatever regular amp sim that you want, which is very cool. All right. So there's a couple of ways to do the auto chords. One is uh, click the menu option, the little music icon down there, and then click on create. And that's going to bring up the proper screen. The other is through voice command. So you click the microphone, play drums. And it's going to play whichever drummer that you pick. So you can pick Dave or you can pick Sharon, which is pretty cool. Um, let's see if it has another little cool voice command. Make me a better guitar player. All right, so let's jam with Dave. So let's do something really, really simple so you can see the accuracy of this and then some of the new updates. So you can either let it cycle through the whole thing or you can hit the little stop button there and then it will stop. So right off the bat, 
something very, very simple, no, it's not entirely accurate. So the new editor feature, I can edit these. So I wanted this whole thing to be A, so I can just click and drag that, edit chord, A major, and then boom, that whole thing is updated, which is actually really cool. So now I can do the same thing with this. I can extend that, edit chord. I wanted that to be E major. Now, the other cool thing that you can do, now I won't have to do this every single time. So if I wanted that same repeating pattern every single time, you can actually edit all of them. So I can go in here, click and hold to edit, edit chord, switch it to A major, and then put apply to all parts. So I'm not gonna do that now, but you'll see down here, uh, right here, this should be A all the way across. This should be E all the way across the four bars. So if I go up here and I edit this, A major, apply to all parts. So now I can see that this has been changed. And the next loop of that phrase has been changed as well. And then I can do the same with this other bar that I've edited here. So I want that to be, well, let's just pick a totally different one, C sharp uh, diminished. And I want to apply that to all parts. So now you can see here that's been updated. Here it's been updated. Here it's been updated as well. So the editing actually is a little bit better. Um, for those of you that have used Circle of Fifths or any other songwriting app, the interface is very similar. I would guess uh, they are going to make it more customizable because right now with the verse and the chorus and the bridge parts, you can't modify those at all. So you can't drag them. Uh, you can't drag anything out of 4-4 four, four time for different time signatures. I mean, you could kind of fake your way through it, I guess, if you just had six bars of E and then one of A and whatever. So you could probably simulate it. Uh, as a serious songwriting tool, mm, probably not as good as Circle of Fifths or some of those other apps, but at least now you can edit the chords because you can see that for even something so simple, four bars of E, four bars of A, it didn't exactly get that right. The last thing with the creating your own track is if you click the uh, little edit button up here at the top, you can transpose. So you can transpose and you can change the BPM as well because it doesn't really detect it when you are recording in the first place. So I think I mentioned this in my last video that it would be very, very helpful if the metronome played along while you are actually recording the eight bars that it tells you to. So if I go in with, uh, let's jam with Dave and I'm gonna completely ignore the BPM. Two, three, four. <laughs> Just see what it does. I probably should have picked a better sound. So it doesn't modify. Um, anything as you're actually playing it. So you could go in here and I could bump up speed. I could transpose, go back here, and now it's all been changed. And there you go. So now let's take a look and see if uh, Sharon is any different. So let's switch to Sharon. See if maybe she's more accurate. I'm going to do the same simple thing as before, and uh, let's see if she can grab it here. Mm-hmm. 
So the chords are accurate, but is the drummer any different? And more importantly, does it really matter? Probably not. It serves its purpose. Um, simply being able to edit this stuff actually is a pretty good update. So let's move on to the next update. So someone had asked if it's possible to record the backing track as you're playing. And the answer is sort of. So while I was actually editing this video, um, I remember that I was using screen recording on the iPad. So if you're using the screen recorder on your iPad, it's going to capture the audio that's being played. So it actually did capture the audio right from the Spark app as well. And then if you were recording through an audio interface and just recording your guitar part, then yes, it's kind of the workaround to do it, but you could do it if you really, really wanted to. So you would just have to take the audio out of the screen recording video that was captured and then blend it with what you're recording through your DAW. So you could, but eh, probably kind of clunky. So there's nothing changed with playing the existing backing tracks. In the latest update, it still shows the chords. It's still going to show the YouTube video. Uh, you can loop certain sections as well. So if I just wanted to loop uh, whatever over and over again, you can set your markers and loop that way. If you need a capo, it will tell you. So I do not need a capo. Um, the error goes away on its own, so you can't click it away, which is kind of annoying. But if you do want to slow it down, uh, you can't exactly set the tempo. You can switch it to halftime, 80% or full. Other than that, there are no other updates with using the existing backing tracks. So from that music menu, you can select by genre, you can select by part, and much like you, how you could start auto chords by saying play drums, you can say play a backing track. And I think all it really does is it dumps you to this screen. So let's give that a whirl. Play a backing track. So it just gives you a list of what you could play. So let's see if you, if you can be specific. Play Filthy Blues. Let's try that. Play Filthy Blues backing track. So it looks like it's filtering it. Uh, let's try this again. Let's try searching for Dirty Blues. Play Dirty Blues backing track. So just a different list. So let's try this again. Let's try... Play a rock backing track. So those are all rock. Okay, what other genres do they have? Do they have... So funk, pop. Okay, let's try funk. Play a funky backing track. Okay, so it tries to match probably just basic keyword matching, but uh, either way, the library is pretty huge, so that might be an easier way to find things. The other thing with the voice command, if you just click on the microphone icon, it'll tell you what you can actually say to it. Make me a better guitar player. Oh, see there, it told me I should stick to drums. Okay, that's pretty cool. All right, so um, not much has changed there. And with 1.5, like I said, one of the problems was actually importing something with Spotify. So it wouldn't play the song. Um, if you're viewing by Spotify, it's going to show you anything that you've imported already. I've already imported these, but you can actually delete these because it does seem to uh, give you the option to import these into the app. So if I go back to Spotify and I want to import a playlist it's going to import the entire playlist and then now it's going to match you can see these are youtube thumbnails um, underneath that first header there so if it already has 
captured the chords for that song. And I would guess that they just do this with whoever's the first user in their ecosystem to actually uh, play that video. You'll see the chords listed there at the bottom. Otherwise, request analysis, and then it will try to find it. So let's pick one here and let's just see how good it works. So listen first before hands-on, so be aware of changing chords. It's captured some of them, so let's just see how accurate it is. So this one's actually pretty accurate. So it will import the songs. It will keep them in your recently played list, which is pretty cool. Um, there is one track that's on here that I did set to private and it does not show up. So as long as the video is uh, not private, so if it's unlisted, it will work. And obviously if it's public, it will work. Um, but there were some songs like I tried this uh, yesterday, was not working yesterday morning. It is working now. And that's probably enough uh, before that I get another copyright strike because I do a lot of covers and instantly copyright strike. Um, so that jam mode works really well. Uh, looping works really well. Creating it, again, your mileage may vary. It's pretty good at detecting the chords when you're importing a song from Spotify or Apple Music. Doesn't seem to work really well when you're creating stuff on your own. So hope you enjoyed this short video of the different jam modes. Remember to update to 1.5. Leave a comment or a question if there's anything else specific you want to see me test with Positive Grid Spark 40. Oh yeah, like and subscribe as my uh, boy would say because he has almost 17,000 subscribers and he keeps calling me a noob because I don't have very many. So if you like and subscribe, then I can kick his butt. See you.